Here we go. I'm good right here. It's not this type of show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here. Save a lot of that love for my good friend. Please give a warm Minnesota, Wisconsin welcome to Kendall, everybody. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm wearing my orange today. For... You, look, you look beautiful for? Thanks. It's um, Orange for Safety, National Highway Workers Appreciation Day. Oh, so. nice. I need uh, traffic, you know? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yes, they work Pretty hard. Cool. They do. They work mm -hmm. hard. I'm telling you, slow down in those construction areas. And uh, if we're talking traffic, again, oh, Kendall, no. Kendall loves when I say this. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, don't drive slow in the passing lane. Remember that. It's my, <laughs> one of my biggest pet. I was behind a woman yesterday. Oh, where are I, you? <laughs> I won't call her out, but she was in a white Toyota minivan. <laughs> and uh, she had blonde hair and glasses, but I won't call her out. Uh, and she was on 62 uh, by France Avenue going, I'm not kidding, 51 miles an hour in the passing lane. And I'm, I, you know, I, I, I admit, look, know thyself, as I say. I don't like this about myself, but I flashed one little light to let her know, well, well, it's better than flipping her off. I mean, you know what I mean? I was like, I, I'm, I'm a polite Midwest boy, but, but because it looked like I had a funeral procession behind me because there was a line back. So I was like, Jason, be calm inside yourself. So I just, I did like this. I go, bloop, one little light flash. And she gave me a gesture. And uh, yeah. Oh, girl. Mm, not Minnesota nice. So I passed her on the right and I may have went like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. So mature. So I gotta tell you, you know, again, hashtag we tell you everything uh, it, when behind the scenes stuff happens. So uh, I think Leo has a shot. So these are our couches. Uh, we're gonna get new ones soon. Uh, that couch is uh, 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 several years old. Now, as you can see, see the bottom cushion there where we sit? We discovered yesterday that the bottom cushion doesn't come off. Now, here's a little thing that you should watch for when, you, when we do interviews over there. These are little cards that the, that the Jason Show producers, Jeff and Ted, they print stuff uh, to let me know, of, hey, this person's Tracy or whatever. So I get a new card for each guest, right, Kendall, every right. guest? Well, over the last, if, if, how many, if you saw Friday's show when I interviewed Bobby Z from uh, The Revolution, okay? <laughs> So producer Jeff hands me four cards for Bobby Z because we did multiple segments with him. So uh, Jeff's like, here's your cards. I go, thank you. And I'm sitting there. That was a horrible voice for Jeff. But anyway, so I'm sitting there and I put the cards beside me on the couch mm -hmm. and I went to readjust. I went like this, you know, and I look over and the darn cards were gone. And I thought, where are they? Uh, Brad was on the floor looking under. <laughs> they were nowhere to be found. Well, yesterday it happened again. We were taping a, a, an additional show that you'll see next week. And we were realizing, let's take the shot again, Leo. The cards, Kendall, can you point to the, the cards were going inside. As I moved, it was going down that crack into an abyss. And Vanna White. So photographer Eric spent, I'm not joking. I love that we're doing a dramatic zoom on the couch, but. <laughs> Photographer Eric spent 15 minutes digging up, I'm not kidding, like 30 cards. Some of the cards were from season one. Yeah, yeah. The first card talked about producer Carl. Producer Carl hasn't worked here in two years. Yeah. So Eric, thank you for dangerous work over there. I appreciate it. Okay, everybody. I know, Eric's my guy. This isn't dangerous. Let's get ready for the hot dish. Here we go, everybody. Oh. 
Save your clapping because this, look, I can be dramatic. Hashtag know thyself. I can overblow things. Hashtag know thyself. I am not doing either with this first story. The full trailer just dropped for the live action remake of The Lion King. And it is one of the best trailers. And uh, Kendall over there has waited till the show to watch it live. Now, uh, we're, let's all lay, uh, audience, we're going to lay a, a, some bets down here. Uh, how much we want to bet Kendall cries at some point during this uh, trailer. Here we go. Roll it, Leo, roll okay. it. Life's not fair, is it, my little friend? While some are born to feast, others spend their lives in the dark. <laughs> begging for scraps. Everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. While others search for what they can take, a true king searches for what he can give. Run away, Simba. And never return. <laughs> Seriously, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep this up because nothing I will say is more. In oh, Leo, go tighter, go tighter on her on her tears. Look at all oh. in the circle of life. Oh. It. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I, I I mean this sincerely. I'm not being uh, funny. I'm not trying to be sarcastic or goofy. Uh, whoever the marketing team is at Disney that was responsible for the marketing of The Lion King, you have done a flawless job. That's one of the best trailers I've ever seen, and I watch every trailer. It's phenomenal. It's, it's, isn't it? Look at you. It was really good. I know. It was good. I know. <laughs> you look like producer Ted at the end of a Hallmark Christmas movie. Yeah. It was good. Oh. I, like... Cody Matz, weatherman Cody Matz and I are both very obsessed with Disney movies and like literally all I have to do is show me like the Disney the, the like, top of the logo yeah. going yeah. yeah oh god you know and, and, and they leave you wanting a little bit more because audience we, we we still haven't heard John Oliver as Zazu and we haven't heard Beyonce as Nala yet which is gonna be and Scar how good was Scar oh. he was that was the he looked terrified mm -hmm. yeah this is it's going to be a giant hit. The movie hits theaters. <laughs> the movie hits theaters in July. And Sorry. <laughs> next, next in the dish. Speaking of tears, for all of you fans of the afternoon talk show, The Talk, the uh, changes, they are coming. More changes. Sarah Gilbert, this surprised the gosh darn out of me, who has been with the show from the beginning, and she's also an executive producer, dropped some emotional news yesterday. Look at this. This is hard to do, and... Something, I'm like okay. already starting, yeah. <laughs> Something that I have been struggling with for a while and going back and forth, but I've decided that it's time for me to leave the show at the end of the season. <laughs> I know, I know. And you'll never be forgotten. Okay. Good Lord. The audience screamed like it was WrestleMania. I mean, it's just a... She's not, look, look at Sharon. Sharon and Sarah live next door to each other. I mean, they're going to see each other every day. I get it. It's nine years. Look at Sharon Osbourne. That's the story yesterday. That's very sweet. They both, they're the only two original uh, uh, table folks since the first uh, season. They've been there from the beginning. Sarah says her, her schedule has been so crazy, and she has new projects popping up, and she doesn't know how she's going to do it all, and she feels that she's not spending enough time with her kids. The news, were, was, as you see right there, was particularly hard for Sharon. The two have been on since the beginning, nine seasons ago. But as the panel reminded Sharon, they live two blocks from each other, so they will still <laughs> see each other every day. I was just, at first I thought, oh, that's the news, Sarah Gilbert leaving. No, the news is Sharon Osbourne had a breakdown in the middle of the yeah. show. Yeah. 
That's going to be the new internet meme. Like, ladies, you need a man who cries for you like Sharon cries for Sarah. for Sarah, Sarah Gilbert. I know. <laughs> and the audience, again, they screamed like, I don't know. Hey, on a little note, too, I just, I look, I, I like congratulating my friends, even if they're on other stations. I want to say congratulations to my friend Amelia Santanella Vasilero Santanella Vasilero uh, because <laughs> she's like, she's my big sister. I love Amelia. Amelia is going to be co-hosting the talk on Thursday. So, yeah. I love what? It. I That's know. Awesome. I love you. I love you. I love you, Mealy. Good luck to you. Next in the dish, more than 40 years after Greece premiered on the big screen. You can do it. Roll it back, relax. Yep. They're doing a prequel. Aaron, so Aaron Schwab uh, just <laughs> cheered that. This will sadly be Aaron's last day with us. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Aaron. Sorry, Aaron. No, don't, don't cheer that. Paramount, listen to the, Paramount's developing a film dubbed Summer Lovin', which will show how Danny and Sandy first got together before the original film. Uh, we know how they got together. They sing about it right here. <laughs> It's inspired by the three-minute song, uh, Summer Nights, uh, in which the two tell their friends about the summer fling they shared. Grease was the biggest hit of 1978, making more than $181 million, and still ranks in the top five of all time for movie musicals. We don't know when this is gonna start filming, but I don't know, why do we need this? We don't need this. We know how Danny and Sandy got together. I don't know how they're gonna uh, uh, pull a three-minute song and turn that into a two-hour movie. You know what I mean? We know. They, they, it was the summer, they had lovin', and then they sang, and that was it. I mean... They had a blast. You didn't know, though, that you needed a live-action remake of The Lion King. But it's going to be great, so maybe we should just be... Never mind, I'm stopping talking. I don't want to lose my job. I'm Sadly, here. following Aaron out the door will be Kendall as well. Can I keep the mug? It's been a great two... <laughs> yeah. Touche. Touche on that one. Ladies and gentlemen, stay right there. Go grab another cup of coffee. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Coming up, it's one of the biggest reality TV show showdowns in a long time. Lisa Vanderpump versus Kyle Richards on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Well, now Lisa Vanderpump is speaking out about where their friendship stands now. Then, they are the most polarizing of Easter candy. The Peeps. Stephanie Hansen, our foodie guru, promises that I'm gonna like at least one of the crazy flavors she's bringing to us today. And then he is a Twin Cities music icon. I love this guy. Mark Malman is here talking about his brand new book, The Happiness Playlist. Don't go anywhere, that is all coming up. Tough loss for Texas Tech, and it may have even been tougher for Texas Senator Ted Cruz because Ted Cruz was at the game, and a lot of Texas Tech fans think he's to blame for the loss. <laughs> because of this tweet sent moments before the end of regulation, he wrote, 35 seconds, one point lead, go Red Raiders, number one defense. <laughs> and then by the, the moment he posted it, the game was in overtime and the Red Raiders lost. And this is not the first time this happened. Last year, before Game 7 of the Western Conference NBA Finals, Ted Cruz tweeted, minutes before tip-off, Houston Rockets clutched City Go Rockets, and the Rockets lost, and he got blamed. <laughs> and back in 2017, I remember he posted, congrats to Lori Laughlin's daughter <laughs> for acceptance of the USC. Well deserved, and we all know, we know what happened with that, so. Oh, Jimmy Kimmel having a little fun with Senator Ted Cruz, who was in our lovely city. He was uh, had a friendly rivalry uh, with, for a few years. More late night for you. Michelle Williams was on Colbert last night, and before talking about her, her current TV show, which, uh, Fosse, I gotta watch that on FX. Did you watch it? Was it good? Yeah. Uh, she talked, oh wait, you're still fired. You're not here anymore, Aaron Schwab, yeah. Uh, she talked about how <laughs> she's become 
And oh, li- you will not believe this. She has become an advocate for equal pay because of this. This was part of the Democratic Women's Caucus on Equal Pay Day. So. <laughs> Something happened to me that you might have heard about where it came to light that I was um, paid. um, It was actually incorrectly reported. It wasn't $100 a day. It was $80 a day uh, compared to my male co-star who made a million and a half dollars. Um, Not per day, but, you know, for like eight days. Hold on. Let me do the math Um, on that. I don't have a pen (laughs) here. Uh, That's a a difference of a few dollars. It it was, it was, it's a... It's an example that really can speak to like the, the larger picture. Uh, the example is so staggering, but it really helps bring attention to the problem that so many women across so many industries face. And I found myself in this situation, and I realized, oh, well, I'm the one here with a voice. So um, I've been learning how to use it. And- Good for you, Michelle. Good for you. That's, that's awful. Mm-hmm. So. If you, don't, if you don't remember the story that she's referring to, Michelle starred in the movie All, uh, All the Money in the World. And remember, Mervy Purvy Kevin Spacey was in that movie, and then they had to remove Mervy Purvy, uh, and, then she, and then they had to reshoot scenes. Well, she was paid $80 a day. A day. A, a day. Mark Wahlberg was paid, what, what did she say, $1.1 million for the whole thing. That's a huge, dis- I mean, that's not a huge discrepancy. That is highway robbery right there. That is, that is despicable. The agents, the, the executives, whoever, whoever signed on that, somebody signed on that. That's despicable. Uh, but now she's getting the last word. She stars in, like I said, the miniseries Fosse Verdon on FX. That's awful. That's, oh, I don't like that. Awesome. Same thing with... We, it's the same thing. I'll keep this brief. It's the same thing we told you the story earlier about uh, Juliana Margulies from The Good Wife Mm -hmm. and the spinoff The Good Fight. They wanted her to do a guest spot. Well, they were going to pay her like a guest star salary. She's The Good Wife. You pay her more. She's not a guest star. Without The Good Wife, there wouldn't be The Good Fight, you ninnies. So pay her what she's worth. And ninnies is a word I haven't used since like the 80s. Yeah, I like that. You like it? I like that. By the way... By the way, uh, we see that you have your severance package there of uh, all of the mugs that you've stolen from our office. That's right. Oh, almost. Oh, right. Oh, we can't well, see it. Like oh, there's like There we go. She's mugs. taking all the mugs from our office. Yes, I get this in $80. That's right, yes. <laughs> Next up, it's the friendship that's lasted through eight seasons of reality TV until now. Ooh, last week, we saw a rather dramatic fight between Real Housewives of Beverly Hills stars Lisa Vanderpump and Kyle Richards. If you don't watch the show, you should know they've been friends for years and years and years and years. Real friends. Kyle accused Lisa of leaking a story about some dog drama and a fellow cast member, something Lisa denied, and it ended with her throwing, in this scene right here, Lisa threw Kyle out of her house. Get out! Goodbye, Kyle! Uh, last night on Andy Cohen, uh, Andy asked Lisa if this really was the end of that friendship. Listen to this. Do you really think this is oh, I, it I don't for the know, two of but, you? You know, I, I've just seen that scene. Obviously, it was a long time ago. It was seven months ago. But, you know, clearly she's not mourning the friendship because of this whole kind of nonsense that was on social media about goodbye, Kyle. And, you know, it was just, OK, it would have been funny, maybe. I mean, it wasn't that smart, but it would have been funny maybe if the friendship had been salvaged. Right. But it has. So, you know, it's, it's been very sad. Lisa heading to the Miss Fire Prevention pageant after that with her crown. Lisa said she would never accuse a friend of something unless she had proof. Well, Lisa hasn't talked to Kyle in seven months and asked what she misses about their friendship. What do you miss the most about your friendship with Kyle? Well, I think we had a lot of fun together. Yeah. You know? Um, so you haven't seen the episodes? I haven't seen anything. You haven't apart, seen anything but the fight? But the fight. Yeah. Because it's interesting, because through it all, she was really playing the middle the entire time. I think Kyle always does that, doesn't she? But wouldn't you, know, you respect that about her? No, well, I mean, because you when you're a good friend, that? I think you stand up for them. I mean, I've stood up for Kyle when I have no idea whether she's right or wrong, even from the first episode. You know? Yeah, she makes some good points. I'm a little bit more team Kyle on this, but Lisa made some good points there. Kyle is a fence sitter. She, I think she was afraid of Lisa for many years, just telling her like it is. And now look right. where, where it's gotten them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they've all called her out on that, too. They've yep. all called Kyle out like, you're afraid of Lisa. And she's like, no, I'm not. No, she is. She is. She was. Still ahead, everybody, a record-breaking day on Jeopardy. Plus, why it's a good thing 
why it is a good thing I went axe throwing when I did. We have video that might make you question trying out this lovely activity for yourself. What am I talking about? You'll see when we come back. Back in a moment, everybody. Two thousand six hundred going into final for you, James. We need to find quantum leap. We do. Happy birthday, Bodger. Booger. Booger. Okay. <laughs> and how much did you risk? Thirty-eight thousand three fourteen. A new one-day record. One hundred ten thousand nine hundred fourteen. And now a four-day record of two hundred forty-four thousand three hundred. History made on Jeopardy yesterday. James Holzhauer breaks the one day Jeopardy record, winning more than $110,000. And over four days, has nearly a quarter of a million dollars on Jeopardy. And one of the winning totals, I think that one was his daughter's birthday. How cool is that? Oh, the that total, is sweet. His total winnings yeah. equaled his daughter's uh, birthday. Oh, I thought maybe he just yeah. did the math to see if he could make no, the, the day. I think know, that record. bid was his or something. There's something okay. about his daughter's birthday. Cool. But, oh, Jeopardy's that one show I would never, I'm way too dumb for Jeopardy. Like, I watch, uh, <laughs> I, I right. watch, uh, like, Kid Jeopardy. I can't answer those either. It's like, <laughs> where did those kids go to school? I went I to Indiana. Know. I mean, we I went. I, there. I, this, you're looking at the product of the Indiana public school system. You know what I mean? We, yeah. Hi. Public education. We're fine. Uh, we just yeah. shouldn't go on Jeopardy. Yeah, I'm not ever. going to. I'll go on Press Your Luck. That's more my speed. This is uh, <laughs> next in the dish. This is crazy, crazy video. So come back to the TV. You've all heard of those axe throwing venues. Uh, they're really hot right now. I, I like them. Well, a Wyoming woman had quite the close call after tossing her axe. Um, oh, oh, no, no, no! Oh. My. No. Check done. No. As Ariana Grande said, thank you. Next. Yeah, no, no. Never. No. I'm gonna stick to that came putt. back. That came back. It's like it's like the cat in Pet Cemetery. That's right. It came back. Came back. You may remember uh, I tried my hand at axe throwing more than a year ago when my producers tried killing me. Uh, this was at the big old. Ah! Uh, oh, I can't even watch this now. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Oh, look, it's clean shaven, Jace. But anyway, that was more than a year ago at the big thrill factory in Oakdale. Yeah, it was a thrill, all right. That's right. Oh. 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 I, did oh. you get it to stick ever? No. Leo's no. daughter I, did. I, did you hear about that? What? Director Leo, his daughter. She's like 11, Leo? She's like, she yeah, did. Director Leo in our meeting today, when they're like, remember, Jace, you were there for an hour and you couldn't throw an axe. And Director Leo, who says, I think Leo has said 57 words this season. <laughs> Leo's sitting in the meeting and he finally pipes up, you know, and he goes, oh, my daughter's 10 and she got it right away. <laughs> I don't need to hear that. Yeah. Everyone knows I have self-esteem issues. <laughs> We'll just stick, we will just stick to putt-putt, you and I. We will just play our putt-putt. The audience is so nice. Still so ahead. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Coming up, she has zero self-esteem issues. It's the season for peeps. Stephanie Hansen is here with all kinds of peeps. We're trying some crazy flavors when we continue right after this, everybody. Right there. It's the Easter season, and aside from Cadbury cream eggs, which, by the way, they've run that same commercial since 1982, there's one treat with that lion dressed up in a bunny. Yeah. Uh, there's one treat that is synonymous with the season, Peeps, and they come in all kinds of crazy flavors now. Here to talk about everything Peeps is the host of the Weekly Dish on My Talk 1071, our good friend, Stephanie Hansen, everybody. Okay. All right. Hi. Hi. Okay. So... Peeps are the fifth most popular Easter food. 500 fifth? million sold, yeah. 
I don't know. I what love the that top you know four. that, right? You don't well, know. I did top. a little peep research. Okay, wow. That's that's why you are who you are, Steph. Yeah. About a month ago, I saw these flavors and I was like, oh, I have to bring these on the show. Do you like regular peeps? No, like, I would rather eat dirt. But I mean, yeah. Well, I, this but, is going to be great. Yeah, I How hate them. How about um, coconut chocolate peeps? No. Steph, you, if I don't like regular peeps, why, I, why would okay. I like the coconut peeps? Here's the best one, though. Okay, these are sugar free peeps, and that's really all that's in the peeps. What is it, air? No, How here's the part. Excessive consumption of polyols may cause stomach discomfort and or mild laxative effect. No, what? You know. Don't eat you know, the sugar free kind. You know what it reminds me of? Remember those chips yes, in the 90s? With the the Olestra? The Olestra? <laughs> yeah, they were fat free, but you'd be in the bathroom That's for like right, 80 days. That's right. Yeah. But these peeps are just 27 calories each full of sugar. So let's just try. This is birthday cake. You like birthday cake? <laughs> <laughs> you like the birthday cake popcorn I bought? Stephanie, Stephanie's talking to me like I'm her nephew. Choo choo, put the choo choo in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm taking the small. My Whoa. boss hates when I eat on air and I look like a, a gorilla, you know? So I'm like. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Oh, they're very sweet. No, that's really okay. I but have you know high what? hopes but for this Steph, one. Let me, uh, you know, I try to be positive when possible. If I'm gonna eat one, I'll, I guess that one's okay so okay, far. Okay, you just okay. Wait, here, this one is sour watermelon, and it actually looks real cute. It's got pink on the inside. Sour watermelon? Yeah. Okay, look at you devouring that. Oh, okay. Okay, this one's good. No, no it's good. That is vile. It's like a jolly, it's like a watermelon jolly rancher. That is absolutely vile. Okay. I liked that one. You R did? Rup your float. Okay. You could put these in a s'more. You can caramelize them. Look, you look too happy. Because they're kind of good. Yeah. Okay. I expected them to be awful like the first one. Rup your float's pretty good. Okay, you know what? The root beer float isn't yeah. bad. And you could put that as a yeah, decoration thank you front in row. a root yeah, beer yeah. float. Okay, this one's going to be good too. Cotton candy. Oh, I do like cotton candy. The cotton candy blizzard, by the way, is back oh, at DQ. Oh, fantastic. I'm just gonna say, yeah, we need, I need to go, but I okay, can't. Okay, that's here. a good one. Okay, what is this? Cotton candy? Cotton candy. And it's pretty. It's pink. It has little Bruce Sprinkles. Come no. on. No. no. Okay, fruit punch. Oh, I hate no, fruit punch. No, you I, don't. Oh, I don't like fruit punch normally. Okay, you have to do it. Okay. It's actually good. It's good. It's like Hawaiian punch. It's pretty good. Oh, here, I, keep let's saying, I keep saying they're all okay. pretty good. Before we get to the final two, let's bring an audience member in to see if I'm if okay. I'm pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Amy. Hi, Amy. Hello. Okay, now, Amy, uh, in your regular life, do you like peeps? Not really. Oh, good. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> now, what flavor would you, if we're going to force you Pancakes to eat this? Pancakes and syrup. Okay. <laughs> Which one? Blue raspberry. Um, well, uh, for my friend, I think cotton candy. Cotton okay. candy, okay. No, I that bit one? off, bit off, bite off the butt. I, I <laughs> ate off that one. There we go. That's yeah. the best part of eating the yeah. peeps is you can eat the ears, eat the heads. It's disgusting. It tastes like sugar. Yeah, and it's yeah. Here, <laughs> taste a funky one. Like eat, yeah, okay, eat the head off that one. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now that's the watermelon one. That was the one I found the Sour most. Sour watermelon. Okay, that tastes like a Jolly Rancher. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Okay. Hey. Here. Take that back to the audience. Have them eat that. Give it up, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Okay, she did she wasn't as mortified. No. Oh, Jace. Oh, this what? could be the one. This could be the one what? That pancakes, kills me? Pancakes in syrup. Okay. Everybody loves a good carbohydrate. <laughs> you can do it, Jason. Here you we go. Like it. It's not bad. You think it's gonna be gross, but you know it's what? not bad. I did it. Um, I'm here to tell you, this is probably the best one. I know! The pancakes and syrup. Yeah. And we have one more. We have like, oh, we have 15 seconds. Blue raspberry. I don't even like blue raspberry, but let's just do it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that uh, one was so bad. That? That was oh. like the worst. Oh. I just want to spit it out. It was the worst. Very, this is awful. Very, this is absolutely, that's a horrible but one. But very pretty. 
it's very pretty. pretty. Oh, it tastes Ooh. like death. Yeah, oh, that was bad. It's horrible. I like okay. I like half of these. That that blue raspberry. Oh, anyway. Put, buy it and put it in a lemon drop cocktail. Yeah. Make them in a s'more. You can okay. chop them up and put them in Rice Krispie bars. You're really trying to shine this, aren't you, Steph? You know. I know. Stephanie Hansen, everybody. Be sure to tune in. My favorite segment. Be sure to tune in to the Weekly Dish on Saturday mornings from 9 to 11 on My Talk 1071. It's a, my guilty pleasure. It's a great, great radio show. And head to Stephanie's website. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, Stephanie's Dish. Still ahead, everybody. We're chatting with my buddy Mark Malman about his new book. But next, I'll show you where Girls Night took me this week. It's my food field trip that I'm taking you on when we come back. Back after this. That was the... Another reason to, what's going on? Are you eating the peeps? You making a mess? <laughs> Another reason to celebrate Minneapolis and Twin Cities. A new list names the most underrated cities in America and leading the way audience, Minneapolis. Yeah. That's right. The list, the list on Ranker.com, Minneapolis gets high marks for a ton of restaurants and a decent cost of living. St. Paul ranks number 15 on the list. Another, another city up there is uh, Indianapolis. I just want to give a shout out because I'm from Indi Indianapolis is another I got, uh, 29th I got, uh, that city got. It's really, if you get a chance, go visit. It's a great, great city. Well, speaking of the great food scene here in the Twin Cities, last night, you know, I always do my girls' night with my friends, uh, Jen Luke, and my other friend with the fancy name, Lisa La Corsier. I got a chance to try out a new downtown, or a new restaurant in downtown Minneapolis, so I'm taking you on my food field trip. It's called P.S. Steak, and it opened a few months ago in the old legendary space that used to house La Belle Vie, which if you're not from here, La Belle Vie was a legendary restaurant. So I brought my Jason camera, and I shot some of our food. This was our, this was our appetizer course. We like to order a lot, audience, and just kind of nibble. That's the beef tartare oysters. This is, I've got to tell you, I'm not a big beef tartare person. This was so amazing. This was the salad course. Um, oh, I, was, I didn't even want to shoot this. I just wanted to eat that salad. But anyway, and then look at this French onion soup. Oh. Homemade with giant homemade croutons, bubbling hot. And then this was pork, perfectly roasted. It was kind of a deconstructed BLT. And then here's the main course. Look at those potatoes, which were one of my favorites. And you'll see in a minute the steak we ordered. We ordered the Denver cut. There it is right there. Oh. Phenomenal. Now, yeah, I got to tell you. I had, I didn't, I didn't have doubts, but I did kind of wonder, does, we have a lot of great steakhouses here in the Twin Cities. There's the menu right there. You know, we have Murray's and, and, and we have Gianni's, which is my favorite. I went in, not skeptical, but like, okay, let's see what they did. I got to tell you, we do, we've done girls night for about, I don't know, four months. We, we rank restaurants. This was number three in the best nights that we've had. It was so good. It's in the Loring Park neighborhood of downtown Minneapolis. Uh, as far as pricing, yeah, it's a, little, it's a little pricey. It is a steakhouse, though, and I believe, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. You don't want a bad cow. You know what I mean? And, and it's a, so it's a beautiful space, too. It's dark. Uh, if you're going for a date night, this is a great place to go. So their menu is available online, and we'll post this whole segment on our Facebook page a little bit later. And thanks to Brent and Mike for hosting us yesterday. I greatly appreciate it. P.S. Steak, everybody. That's our food field trip for this week. Well, when we come back, we're chatting with Mark Malman, Minnesota music icon, when we return. Back after this. Well, our next guest's life changed one morning at 3 a.m. when he woke up to a panic attack that wouldn't go away. He turned to music to help him cope, and now he has a new memoir talking about his whole journey. Give it up for the author of The Happiness Playlist and my good friend of 20 years, Mark Malman, everybody. Hello! <laughs> I was, I was going to set my card here, but this couch eats cards, so I'll oh, set no. it over here. That's right, yeah. I hope my credit card's not Exactly, on be couch. careful. <laughs> I was trying to remember uh, when we were talking to the producers, we met, uh, I think, was it at CCO? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Because you were working, what were you doing? I, I was editing the morning news, you are working the assignment desk. That's right. But you know, to like keep our ages down, let's just say it was 10 years ago. That's right, 10 years, that's 10 right. Years yeah, ten, let's say 10 years ago. <laughs> but uh, what was it like, I, I hear from people that write books about their lives, write autobiographies, write a book that is very cathartic, that you work out a lot when you see it, on, when you see your life kind of in the written word. Was that the experience for you with this? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> When you write well, a, there's the interview, everybody, in Mark's book. <laughs> no, yeah. When you write a book, you're sitting inside in front of a computer. And I'm used to touring and playing shows and, you know, going, going out to eat in restaurants. And this is like order a pizza, sit in front of the computer and write. Sometimes there's a dog there. Yeah. And then a year goes by. What made you want to do it, though, buddy? Well, I, I, I had this playlist that I used for a long time. And, and I... I I didn't even know I was going to write a book, really. I, I, got, I just thought there were a lot of like, self-help books out there that, that are depressing. And I thought, well, why can't we write a happy one? And I'm not a, like a, you know, a psychologist or a, I didn't even know if you know that. But I, I, I knew that about <laughs> you, yes. Uh, uh, but I'm like kind of an authority on music, you yeah. know? And it helped me so much, just like the power of, of positive songs has helped me so much with grief and panic anxiety. And, and and you wanted to put that out there. And for those who don't know, if you're watching us in other parts of Wisconsin or Minnesota, you're like, oh, Mark looks familiar. Google Mark, he's done it all. He's been <laughs> in the music scene. How would you describe, for people that are unfamiliar with you, how would you describe your musical style and how would you describe your career to someone you're, that's just looking at you right now on the Jason Show going, he looks familiar, Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've put out records like everybody. I, I toured, toured America for a long time. Uh, star on First Avenue. I, you know what? My Star on First Avenue is below Ice Cube and above Joan Jett. So that's basically a combination of those two things. That's a pretty good spot, buddy. <laughs> I know, right? If that was my squad, I'd be like... Well, and, it, and, it, and it, it's funny, every time I pass First Ave, uh -huh. and I see you're the only person that I know with a star. So I go, I know him. I know him. You got to get a star, oh, man. Oh, no, 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 not at First No, first not at First Ave. First get on it. No. What, uh, when, when you look back at your career, though, because I, I, I really do, that's why I, we haven't chatted about this. When you look back at your career, what floats to the top for you? What do you, what do you think about the most in your, in your career? You know, I, I, this is, I mean, I've, I've traveled all over and I, I've played with famous people, I've met famous people, and I, I've released, I've been able to live my dream. Yeah. You know, when, when And that's we, a blessing by itself. I yeah. mean, we both are examples of two people. We're both people. examples yeah. of people who just were like, we don't have any choice but be who we are, so the world has to adapt. And I, I think that's probably the most rewarding part, is just being able to be myself with my podcast. I can be weird on stage, I can dance a lot, and I can write a book about maybe some traumatic events that could help people and, and, uh, and it seems to be working. The, play, the, the, the book is called The Happiness Playlist and it actually is a playlist, right? There's the, the cover, nice cover by the way, buddy. Thank I you. like that Thank very you. much. It came into the office, I'm like, look at Mark. <laughs> uh, what types of songs, Mark, what, all kidding aside, what kind, what kind of songs are on the playlist? You know, I, th I think like when, you, when you're dealing with, in a bad mood, like a really, like trauma or it's a loss of a family member, something we all go through, you kind of got to bypass your brain and go with your body and kind of like funkiness, you know, dance songs. Move your body and your mind's going to follow. It just, that's how it works. Because I, I got to tell you, I'm one of those. So now I gotta, I'm going to look at your playlist because I'm one of those and I probably think some people are like me on this one. When I'm in a bad mood, I listen to sad music. I, and that's probably not the best thing. When I've had a bad day, do you know what? I, I've never admitted this. Do you know what I listen to? Bad day. That song, So You Had a Bad Day. I listen to that, yeah. But you know, that's like... Don't laugh at that, Evan. Don't, it's, I'm revealing it here, yeah. I mean, that's the catharsis of it, you know? And, and I, I think that works. For me, there's this Nine Inch Nails song that I, I, I turn it up real loud and I feel great. And I don't know why. And I write about that in the book. But there is also this place where you have to have some self-care and when listening to music. You know, I stopped writing music when I was in a bad mood in like 2003. I said, I'm not gonna write. And if I write a sad song nowadays, I, I'm usually in a good mood when I write it. Yeah, and, and the, uh, they were telling me you were touring. What are you doing at the libraries? Tell me about that. You're oh, curating. Yeah, the, the, the public library has this new thing where you curate their vinyl collection. Cause you know, vinyl's oh, hot right now. Oh. So you, for a month you can like curate their vinyl and then they, Listeners can go into the vinyl listening room. It's so hip. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, like I know, that. right? Go, go library. I like that. I like it too. Do you think, do, uh, do you think you're going to write another book or was this, uh, did you pour everything into this one? Uh, this is, I wanted a short book that people could read on a plane and I wanted a book that people wouldn't be bummed out with but would still enlighten their, like, you know, um, karma. So I, I hope so. I get it. I, I, you know, this, this just popped in my mind and I thought, you're the perfect person to ask because of what you just wrote. You wrote about a, a, a playlist that has helped you through times. I would imagine, and this just kind of hit me, I would imagine as someone who does music, when someone comes up to you, because I know for me with this show, when someone comes up and says, hey, I start my day with you, yeah. and it starts with a smile, it's not fake, it's not BS, that means the, the world to me. I would imagine as a songwriter, when people come up to you and say, hey, this song of yours helped me through X, Y, and Z, I know you, that must Absolutely. be incredibly special for you. Absolutely. I mean, other Because you have that power with music. You do. But really what you're doing is you're drawing out the power that's within people already. You're mm. speak, creating something for them to say that maybe they, they, they didn't know how to say and music allows you to do that, you know? Oh, perfect answer. I love it. Mark's going to stick around. We're going to wrap up the show up, Mark. But the Happiness Playlist, everybody, is available on Amazon. And for information on book signing events, head to Mark's website, markmalman.com. We're going to wrap up the show with Kendall, Mark, and Peeps when we come back. We're going to get Mark to eat some Peeps. Those nasty Peeps. Welcome back, everybody. Wrapping up the show. Kendall's here along with our special guest, Mark Malman. I, I haven't said this to you, uh, I, I've said it to you privately, but I want to say publicly because I have known you for so, watching you and we don't get to see each other as much as we did back when we worked in the newsroom together. But I, I, I've said this to people. It's been so incredible watching you uh, when I see you on Instagram and I'm so proud of you. And I, it means I feel Likewise. I feel very I, I'm very proud of you. And Likewise. I just think it's great. I think, yeah, you deserve <laughs> all the success. So hug it out. Uh, <laughs> You saw Mr. Malman. You saw I did, yeah. At the, I was sitting down. Well, first when I saw you come in, I'm like, oh, he looks familiar. And then I was like, oh, he's on our show. Oh, yeah, I saw you at the Big Turn Music Festival. My family and I had so much fun. You were like standing on the piano. Yeah, I let you it guys out. have I never seen him play. It was so fun. And then after the, after the festival, you came up to me and said, when we go on the Jason show, <laughs> make sure we all match. I know, we do kind of all. <laughs> look at this. Yeah. We, look like, we look like one of those... We look like one of those family photos where everyone wears denim. You know what I mean? <laughs> Different shades of denim, you know, and they have their white dog in any way. That's great. Uh, one of the fun facts about you that I didn't know until we were doing research, do you do, you do music for trailers. I love a good trailer. Yeah, I've done a lot of trailers, yeah. Give me mm -hmm. some of your favorites. Let's start. Uh, Wally, right? You did one for well, Wally? Well, uh, there was a lot with Wally, but I, I did. <laughs> I, Entire trailers. I did Adventureland. I did 10,000 BC, uh, The Hitcher with Sophia Bush. Um, lots of them. I wow. Don't Do you like it? I love making music, any kind of music. You know, I, I've written jingles and I've written children's music and music for video games about war in the same day, actually, once. <laughs> I did. I did. I had to write a song about like algorithms for a children's book in the morning, and that night I worked on a trailer for a, a war video game. Are you serious? <laughs> in the same day? The same day. How do you readjust your mood between that and that? <laughs> he reads his book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The audience. Dance. I dance for a while. Uh, a little dance. The audience is hosting the show now. I love it. There. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Dumb question, Jace. Has it. Uh, other than the tour, are you? Uh, what's next? Are you, you're on a publicity tour for the book. Do you have any doing gigs some, coming up? Oh yeah, all the time. Uh, I'm doing a bunch of festivals in town this summer, and I'll be traveling around the region and probably a U.S. tour in fall. I mean, it's part of uh, being a working class musician. You, you're out there on the road. Do you still like the road? <laughs> I love it. I you love do. the food. <laughs> 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 Not like the McDonald's. No. Uh, well, you know, yeah. we talked about the Dairy Queen Blizzard, if okay. I can have one of those. Mark and I are not only your 20-year uh, friends, but we have something very important in common. We both love... Cotton Candy Blizzard. That's right. <laughs> we love it. You, cotton Candy. What, you've never had the Cotton Candy Blizzard? Well, that's because I stick to my, like, Reese's cookie dough. That's fine. You can do that, too. But you should come over to our side for a minute. The dark and side. You, yes. And we will treat you to a Cotton Candy yeah. Blizzard. Your life will never be the same. Okay. It's, yeah. yeah. I'm into it. I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go sick, see Mark. Yeah, you'll make it. Uh, yeah. 
Tomorrow on the show, everybody, <laughs> producer Ted reviews <laughs> the new food inside Allianz Field in St. Paul ahead of its grand opening this weekend. Plus, stepping up your Easter basket game. We've got ideas on what to put in the baskets besides just candy and peeps, right, Steph? That's right. That's uh, t- tomorrow. Right now, though, I want to thank this great studio audience, Mark, all of our guests, Stephanie Hansen, and for you watching. And if you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong.